All right, in this video, we are going to uh, talk about functions, something, uh, well, you've used them already. You've used the print function and the input function and the int function. Um, I'm sure that you've probably used another function as well, but I can't remember one right off the top of my head. But anyway, these are all functions. They're like uh, a predefined um, bit of code that accomplishes some particular, very specific task. So we always want functions to do a very specific uh, thing for us, whether it uh, could be the absolute value function or um, power function where we raise a base to an exponent. We would want it to only do that. We don't, we don't want to our functions to do, be doing anything other than like one thing. <laughs> We're going to keep them very focused. Um, there, uh, Python comes with a number of built-in functions. And um, in addition to those built-in functions, you can create your own user-defined function. So uh, what we'll do, that's kind of what we're going to be discussing. Uh, maybe we'll discuss a little bit, um, a number of functions, but um, we'll, we'll just talk about them in general. So let me switch over to our text that we have and move forward with that. All right, so I'm in chapter four, here, as you can see, and I'll just briefly kind of go over this. And as usual, you can type in uh, uh, a number of things into your Thani, uh, follow, kind of follow through some of the examples so you can tinker and um, see how things work out for you. There's a couple of pieces uh, that are necessary in defining a function, your own function. Uh, we've used the print function, but we did not have to define that function because we're we're not writing that function. It was written for us. So the only thing we ever had to do with print or input or int, all of those functions, uh, was to call them. Okay. So what we're looking a little we're looking a little bit more under the under the hood here, and we're going to see how we can create our own function. And it, it relates to the print function. It's just someone else has already written the code to cause the print to work the way we want it to so when we're attempting up in our top window we're attempting to define a some function of our own um, it'll take this uh, this kind of a format here uh it st always starts with the word def so we're defining something new here right and a function always then has a name some kind of name in the case of print the name is print and then it starts and then there's an open paren here right and so and that, that's typically the name and the open paren is how the, when we make a call uh, uh, to this function, whatever it is, when we, when we create it, that's how the interpreter will know it's a function call as opposed to being a variable, right? Because variables don't have that paren. Remember the machine, the interpreter, is, is, uh, has no intelligence. It's, it's just pattern matching. So we're trying to pay attention to what kind of patterns we want to provide this, uh, the interpreter in order to get it to function properly. So we've got the keyword def, right? So that's a keyword in Python. Name is whatever you decide you want to call some function that you're creating. There's open and a curly uh, parenthesis, and we end it with a colon, right, for our first line. Now, what we put in, in between those open and closed parentheses are zero or more what are known as parameters. So these are things that we would want to pass to this function currently called name. All right, so we could pass, or not, we could pass nothing. If we don't put any parameters in there, then we're just calling the function, right? And then maybe we would inside the function have a print or something. Um, but typically you wanna pass some things in, pass some values or something in. We're gonna see some examples as we move forward. So that's the first line of the function definition of a new function, user-defined function. Then we need the body of the function, right? The code that gets the thing done that we're trying to do. And so here, this is being represented as a, a generic word, statements. So notice that statements is indented under the definition. And statements could be as many of them as you want. There could be one, ten, hundreds, whatever. They would all be indented at the same level, right? They would all be at this level of indentation. And that's how, and then when you're finished with the function definition, we come back out to this level of indent, indentation where def is. Um, so, so that's how the interpreter can tell that these statements 
this code that you have written belongs to this function, right? So that, that's kind of important to, to recognize. And so they're calling this one, I'll go a little bit further down here, they're calling that the header line, that very first one. This is the header line. Or, I, you know, you might call it if you were in uh, another, I don't know about language, or so other people may call it a, a signature, a function signature. It has the, the name and the parameters. Right, and then the body of the function is the statements that we have here. Okay, we've already seen uh, a loop that we've worked with. We're going to take a little bit of that, take a look at that that turtle code and see why we might want to use um, a function or a user defined function here. Um, and here we have one that's we're defining right here. See, I know we're defining it because I'm looking at the format of this. It starts with the keyword def, it ends with the colon. There's some name here, in this case, draw a square, and then in parentheses, an argument list. So when we call this function, we'll call it by name, draw a square. You'll see an example in a minute, open paren. We're going to have to pass it something and something, right? This is a co two comma separated somethings that are getting passed in. Now, I can't tell. I kind of have a feeling I know what, what's going to be passed in here, but I can't tell by, there's nothing indicating what those things are. There's just the letter T and um, SZ, the letters SZ. So they're going to take on some values uh, when the function gets called, but we don't really know. Remember, we're trying to keep track of what types are, right? We, we, we want to pay attention to our, our, ver our data types when we're calling functions or printing things, whatever we're doing. All right, so now this line of code here is a spe it's kind of a special, it's a documentation line of code when you use three quotes. Um, and there's a little bit of a write-up as, as we move forward. I'll let you read through that, but it's, it's, it's kind of like a comment, but it gets treated in a special way. It's like a special comment. All right, so here we're going to use the for loop. And notice how it's indented inside of the definition. So this is the body. All of this is the body. All of this is the body of the function. Right, and I know that the body is finished when here on this line of code, we're back out, our indentation is back out at the level of def, def, so in that column. All right, so we can clearly see this is the, the function definition. The name of this function is draw a square. It takes two parameters. Don't forget that colon. It won't work without that colon. All right, so we've got the for, the for loop here which we looked at in uh, last, the last, well, last week, I guess. So it has the keyword for, and then, um, and we're using the range function here. So that's another, that's a built-in function. I know it's a function because there's a name of something, right? And then an open paren and a closed paren. And uh, there's a one parameter that it takes, right? So that's a, clearly, that looks like a function, right? But it's just the call. We're not defining the function here, right? There's no use of the keyword def. This is a function that came with Python. So we're going to call this range function at four with four, and um, the function is going to work the way we expect it to, that you, that you learned how to last week. Okay, and for each i in this range. So it's going to go zero, one, two, three, right? T dot forward. So forward's a function. It's a built-in function again because we're not we're not defining it here. We're not def. The only thing we're defining is draw square. So we've got forward and left. These are both functions, built-in functions. Um, and I know from when we were working with turtles last week that I know that the turtle object, which came in on this module, right? The turtle object came with some built-in functions. Now we call them methods then, and those words are oftentimes used interchangeably, methods and functions, often with an object-oriented programming language like Python. <laughs> uh, it's typically, they call these things methods. These things are typically called methods. These, So this would really would be called uh, a, a method declaration. All right, right here, this thing, you could call it either way, a function definition or a method declaration. Uh, definition. Usually if it's a if it's an object oriented language, we, we typically you're going to hear people say method instead of function. But those those words get they're the same thing. They get used in different ways. 
All right, so I know that forward is a, a function that's built into this turtle module because we used it last week. I knew, so I know that. And I, I know the same with left. It's a function that's it's in the turtle module. A turtle object contains those methods. So I know that T then must be a turtle, right? So I can call turtle dot forward. The forward method within the turtle object. The left method within the turtle object. It's like we did last week. And so then these are the parameters that came in. So I can say when I'm looking at this, I'm just analyzing what someone else has written. This T needs to be a turtle object. So when I make a call to draw a square, one of the things I'm going to send it is a turtle object. So I'll have to create a turtle and then call draw square and pass it the turtle object. Now SZ, that must be how far we want to move forward. All right, because that's what the forward function wants. It wants an integer that says how far we're going to move the size, the length of the of the square. So S Z, when I call draw square, then let's let's kind of summarize it. I'll have to do draw square, open paren, pass a turtle object there, comma, pass an integer there, parenthesis, and that'll be the end of my call. Right. So the colon and the keyword def only exist in the definition this would be the call and you'll see it in a moment although that t and that s z will be replaced with actual something right we'll, we'll, we'll see it in a minute so up oh, so we get the screen as usual we set the background color so look now you can you're going to start to see like that's a function right screen that's a built-in function and it does not take any parameters bg color is a built-in function it's a maybe we should call it a method because it's a, a function that belongs to um, a screen a screen object right that wn since we did turtle dot screen that was our constructor for a screen object so wm points to the screen object wm dot bg color is referring to a, a method within the screen object called bg color right and so just like before it has a name an open paren and a close paren and notice how there's no colon at the end of that and there's no def at the beginning right so this is not a definition this is a call this is not a call it's a definition so by writing the definition you're not actually calling the function you're just it's a blueprint right you're saying this is the way a function should work should someone in the code call it at some point right so bg color looks in this turtle uh, uh module there is <coughs> a method that's been defined in some sort of way like this with the def and and the name then is it's def um bg color open paren and then there's some variable name there right color and so we're expecting in the definition, if we were looking at the definition of BG color, that's what it would look like. And there's some code here that, that, that does what we're trying to do, it makes the background turn green, All right? And so a, a function, once you get it created, it's kind of like a black box. You don't really need to know how it gets at what it's doing done. You do if you're writing it. <laughs> but if you're just using or calling a function, then you're kind of we're in a thankful kind of a position where now we don't have to figure this out how, how to uh, how, how to make this do what we're trying to get it to do. Title, same thing. It's another function. It belongs to the object to the screen object that we've named MN. So this function title has been defined inside Turtle here, right? The Turtle um, module. All right, so here we go. Let's get down to 14. We're creating, here's our, just, just a variable name, right? We know that's not a function because it does not have a parenthesis. Now it has an assignment operator. So we're trying to assign to this variable this, whatever this is going to be. And so what we're doing is we're, we're going through the turtle module. Here's the turtle module. Dot the turtle constructor that's within that turtle module module so this creates a turtle right 
And so we've got a new cre turtle created in memory through this. That, a reference to that turtle gets placed into a variable called Alex. Now, every time we refer to Alex, we're referring to this turtle that we just created. All right, so then now I'm calling draw square and I've got a paren on there. So the interpreter is saying there must, this is not a variable, there must be a function, a user defined function called draw square because this is not a variable, right? It's a function because of the open paren. It knows right at that moment. It doesn't know anything. It's matching the pattern, right? As soon as it's sold, soon as the pattern, <laughs> that par open parenthesis wound up in the pattern, it, it has been determined by the software called Thani that, um, that this is a function call. So then Thani is going to say, let me see if I can find this draw square. Well, here it is. So now Thani is going to say, okay, if you're going to call that function, you need to send it two things, a T and an SZ. Now it's not going to, it's not going to check the types because this is not a strongly typed language. This is a loosely typed language and, and we can pass anything we want to T, but clearly we need to, we know from looking at the definition that it needs to be a turtle because this method forward only exists as a function of a turtle within the turtle uh, module, uh, the turtle object. So I do, I know that T has to be a turtle. And so when I call it, Oh, I actually even said it in the documentation here. Make turtle T. So they're saying right there that that's, that T is a turtle. A square of SZ. So I guess they're saying size. A square of size SZ. So we can kind of tell from the documentation, which is why it's there. So in any case, I set a turtle and a size, 50. And then we went ahead with the, the main loop like, like before. And so all I had to do, once I have the square defined, draw square, all I have to do from the code is call it. And I just want to point out one more time, I know I did already, but see, I know that that's a call because it doesn't start with the keyword DEF, DEF, and it doesn't have a colon at the end, right? It, the name is the same and the number of arguments has to be the same, right? I can't just not pass anything. Or, or the interpreter is going to complain about that, right? It's going to say, you're supposed to be sending two things. Something that I could put in T in the function definition and something that I could put in SZ in the function definition. All right, and I, while we're standing right here, this you should think of it as like a closed garden here, right? So these variables, these are like variables now. They are not like variables, they are within this closed garden though. So I would not be able to refer to SZ, for instance, down here somewhere. All right, because we won't be able to go into that function to find it. Only while that function is executing will that variable SZ exist. So it's, lo it's called local there, local to the function. I just wanted to bring that up because I saw the SZ there. I don't know. It just came to mind that I should say, I think. So there we go. We've created a turtle. And then we passed the turtle in to the function. And we didn't have to, in our previous program, we wrote all this right in what I'm going to call the main body of the program. This is main. So we'll think of that area. Some, in some languages, you actually name that area. Of course, naturally, it's named the mean. And I think of, I like to think of, um, and I think it's productive to think of it this way, of that main portion of the program as kind of the manager. And these function definitions that we have here, you may have a, a series of them. These function definitions are like specialty workers. So if we want to try to make an analogy of a restaurant here, we would say that this is like, this is maybe the restaurant manager. And this, we're going to have one of these for chef, one for server, one for dishwasher, one for pantry uh, chef, uh, one for dessert chef. And then the manager will call each of them at a, whenever it's appropriate. So the manager's kind of running the show here, main is. 
and making use of these specialty workers when the manager sees fit. So, and when I say when he sees fit or he or she sees fit, that just means should should we call draw square here <clears throat> or should we swap it with this one and call it draw square here, All right? <clears throat> do we want to seat people at the table and then serve food or do we want to do it the other way around? Serve food and then seat people at the table, right? So we want to we want to place the things or call the functions in the order that's appropriate for what we're trying to accomplish. But that said, all we're doing here is calling those functions now, right? We don't have to rewrite them again. So let's move along here. Um, this is two per hours. This is all the stuff I just said already. Uh, and this is called that that triple quote is a doc string. So you might want to take a peek at that and then you'll really kind of understand what that's about, but it's documentation. Uh, bop, 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 bop. I think we mentioned this, all of this we did. So this is a user defined function. The name starts with def, it ends with colon. The name is multicolor square. <coughs> it has two parameters. T and S Z. This is the doc string right here. Uh, here's a loop. It doesn't have to be a loop, right? I'm not saying that all functions in their definition must have a loop. It just so happens that a loop is appropriate here. So you can kind of trace through that, but I can tell you, I'll, I'll say a few things here. I'm trying to keep the, the video somewhat short, at least. That's a turtle, right, that we passed in. Oh, excuse me. So that's we're changing the turtle's color, uh, and we're moving the turtle forward, and we're moving the turtle left. All right. Every time we call, draw multi multicolor square. Oh, it's going to be a red one, a purple one, a hot pink, and a blue one. All right. So for each color in this list, we're going to run through. I, I wound up going through it a lot. I didn't want to do that. Okay. I'm going to stop there and let you think about it more on your own. All right. So that's the end of our function definition. I know because. The indentation, it's okay to keep indenting further and further. You're still in there. It's when you come back out. When you come back out to this level of indentation, then you're finished with the function, the function definition. All right, so because we're back out at that level, that column right here, we know we're finished with the function definition. And so this is main. Now, I'm going to go ahead and call it main. So these are the things we're doing in main. All right, and we'll see that there is a call somewhere in here to draw multicolor square. Here it is. The call to draw multicolor square has no keyword def in front of it. It has no colon on the end of it. All right, but I've got to give it a turtle. We know that, so we must have created a turtle before we get past the turtle. We have to have created it, right? There's test right there. This is where turtle got created, test. And then size, we're passing the contents of a variable. Here it is. So we're passing a 20. Whenever we refer to the variable named size, we're going to get the value that's contained in that variable, and we have assigned a 20 to that variable. So that's what's going to get placed there. You can think of this as that's, that is the, the object of memory, and this is size is just a 20. So now inside this, inside here, SZ is going to have a 20, right? Because we called, we made a call to it. So let's look at what happens when you make that call. That's a call to this function definition up here, right? So we're, we're, we pass it test and we pass it the 20, right? So now we're looking here, it's going to be test.color test.forward20, test.left. Okay, so these parameters are the way we pass values from main to the function. Remember the function is like a, a closed garden here, right? So it, within the function, I wouldn't be able to, to request tests. All right, we don't want to do it that way. We don't even want to think of it like that. So I don't want to try to use the word, the keyword tests inside the function because tests 
it, it's not a keyword, sorry, the variable name, tests. Tests is the variable that was defined in main, not in the function. So we don't, we want to keep the function contained to itself. Ultimately, what would be really cool is if we could copy that and paste it somewhere in other code. If we, if we did lots of work with these turtles, then maybe we would write some kind of extraordinary code and we would want to reuse that code. So we would package that up. All right, so I don't want to start referring to things that are unique to this particular implementation of you know something that just utilizes this function. All right? If we start trying to have this function come in here, who knows what we're going to do in some other mean? We might do some other kind of circle design or, or square design. But we keep wanting this. So I want to use this, but I want it to be isolated so I can plug and play it, pick it up and, and use it in other programs and not have to it to be dependent on variables that are in the new program that I'm throwing it into. I hope that's all making sense. So you can look through this a little bit and see if you can't uh, understand how this circle may have gotten created. It's not a circle. That's a Fibonacci sequence you're looking at here. Spiral, right? So let's take a peek here. I think I've talked about all of this already, so I'm going to kind of go fast through it. And if you guys have issues, then let's um, let's discuss that separately on Tuesday or Thursday. Uh, functions can call other functions. Okay, so you can call a function from within a function. So here we're defining another new function here. Draw a rectangle, and um, there's the doc string. Oh, there is no function. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're doing it right here, right? We're calling a function forward within this function, draw a rectangle. I could also call the print function. I could call the input function. I could call, call any of the functions that I want. In fact, I could define another function, and I think that's what they're going to do here. Draw square. Here we go. So draw square is a function definition, right? It takes two parameters. And draw square calls... See, this is not a definition, right? That's a call. There's no keyword def in front of it. It's a part of the body of the definition for draw square. Draw rectangle is a call to a function that must exist already. It's not being defined here, and that function takes three parameters. Draw rectangle takes three parameters. Okay? So we have the function draw square calling the function draw rectangle. <laughs> what we would do is in our main, we would call draw square. Draw square would then, as it's executing, call draw rectangle. Okay? That's all the stuff I just covered. Flow of execution, top down sequence, sequential, top down. You want to definitely keep an eye on that. <laughs> All right, and I see they're using a different um, IDE here, which is fine. Oh, they're using PyScripter. Yeah, so PyScripter is just another uh, Python interpreter. Uh, program kind of like word uh there's word which is a text editor and then there's google docs which is a text editor they're not going to be exactly the same but they they really do the same thing right <clears throat> and so you'll see them as you're as you're looking through this now they're referring to it but you know it even looks pretty close to the same you know we don't know anything about that right now uh, but here's that draw uh oh here's that uh draw multicolor square so this one you won't be able to copy paste it but you know okay so this is some built-in functions they're going to go through on this one abs i'm sure uh, i'm sure you understand that one it, it's the uh, absolute value so here we are in the bottom screen the interpreter and we're, so we're just making calls we're not having to define anything these are built-in functions so you're, you're, we're trying to get exposed to what I said there's built-in functions, and but we, do we know what they are? We don't unless somebody tells us. So there is an ABS, absolute value. 
So if you type in ABS negative 5, it takes a parameter, uh, an integer of some sort, or it could be positive, it could be negative, and it returns the absolute value. And there's a number of them. There's PAL um, that's 2 raised to the 3, 7 raised to the 4. So you, the PAL is the function mean. It takes two arguments, the base and the exponent. There's max. It has a max of, uh, it'll tell you what the big, from a, a list of numbers, comma separated list of, of ints, Actually, it doesn't even have to be it's. It can be expressions. Well, because the expression would evaluate, right? So this would, before the call gets made, each of these have to be evaluated. So this would, would just evaluate to 33, right? So your first argument would be 33. And then we'd have to you know, figure out them, all of them. 15, right? You go through every one of them. And then the function call will send that comma-separated list and return whichever one's the largest one. And in this case, it was 503. So that's what it was returning. So I don't know why we're going to talk about returning values because that's what it's doing. Oh, let's show you how to do it in the um, in the definition. Here's the definition. Final amount. This is the doc. Uh, here we go. So the last line in the function definition, last line of code, uses the keyword return. So we can return anything we want. What's happened here? is there was a, you're familiar with this equation, I'm sure, there was, this equation gets calculated, here's all the variables get passed in, these variables do exist inside the function, so now whatever, whatever comes in here, I'll be able to, uh, P will get replaced by whatever got passed in, right, so R will get replaced by whatever got passed in when the call got made, this is not the call, this is the definition final amount. Here's the call. To invest. It's a variable that has a number in it here that we, got, that we uh, grab from uh, the input. In the end, it makes the calculation. Let's, let's not go through it line by line unless you have issues. Um, the calculation gets made and the result of the calculation goes into this variable A and then we return variable a that is the contents of variable a and then here where do we make the call the way to think of this is that call that whole highlighted section that i have there is replaced by whatever got returned so if we're going to return 25 the contents of the variable a is 25 then just think of that all as 25. so 25 gets assigned to fnl the variable fnl right and then um at the end you have fn out the contents of that variable which is what got returned here right uh, what got calculated got returned which is now sitting in here so i'd like for you guys to kind of look through that play with it i think yeah i mean you can see me highlighting it so you can copy paste that and play with around with this and see what you can do I don't see a whole lot here. Um, this one, I'll make note of it because it's something that we've already kind of worked with. It was up in the code. I can highlight it there or here. So remember, these, these get evaluated. These are calls. These are all function calls, right? There's a name and a paren. That's a function call. There's a name and a paren. That's a function call, right? So they have, they have just like in math, how we work from the innermost parens out. We're working from the innermost function calls out, right? So this function call has to get made first. And then we'll think, if somebody typed in a 12, right? Right there from that input, we could think of that whole highlighted area being replaced by whatever they inputted, in this case, 12, right? And so then float gets called with 12. So 12, the input, we know the one thing to remember with input is it returns a string. And we need this to be a floating point number, a decimal number, so that we could do calculations with it. We don't want it to be a, a string. So that's what float is used for. It's just like int. It's just it's doing a, a, decimal, a decimal number instead of an int. Mm. 
thing. I already spoke about that, that they're local. Now, here's just an example that you might want to run. This one, I probably, you probably should try to kind of study this one and make sure that this makes sense to you because we do have two functions, user defined now, one here and one here, right? And this is what we're thinking of as main. So we're going to start our program right here on line 23 and we'll execute top down. But each time, sometimes, well, what's, what we're saying here is like make window gets called. The very first thing, make window gets called. So then we're going to pause our execution there and we're going to be, begin executing here. All right? The return happens. So this gets replaced with whatever got returned which in this case is a screen, right? Yeah, screen object. All right, and so then there's test, test, and we're gonna call make turtle. We're passing two arguments. We're gonna call make turtle. We pass two arguments. So color, C-O-L-R, gets replaced with hot pink, and S-Z gets replaced with five. So here we're making three turtles, right? A pink, a black, and a yellow turtle. So th this does actually kind of make turtle. This, I think, really kind of points out why we re one of the really compelling reasons to, to create functions. If we didn't, if we had not done this as a function, make turtle, we would have had to do this three times. Right, so it would have been 12 lines of code instead of three. And what if we had uh, 5,000 turtles to make? <laughs> right, so we can see that this could really begin to um, explode. So we want these function calls. We want, we want these things, these particular uh, activities to be wrapped up in these function calls. Uh, pal is a very good example of where it, 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 it uh, the function pal, the built-in function, um it does base raised to the exponent right so it's very useful to not have to figure out how to calculate that and, and keep writing it over and over and over again just figure it out once wrap it up in a function definition and then you can call it whenever you need to use that now the case pal a pal it's pretty awesome because the function was already made for you right but uh not everything's like that so in any case, I think that'll do it for uh, chapter for functions. Catch you next time.